Media. I'm Robbie Suave. And I'm Amber Duke. Let's get right into it. HBO's Bill Maher has a message for liberals who dream about moving to Canada or Western Europe. Those places are not all they're cracked up to be. Let's watch. Canada has the highest debt to GDP ratio of any G7 nation. I don't know what that means, but it sounds bad. <laughs> So does their vaunted health care system, which ranks dead last among high-income countries in access to primary health care and ability to see a doctor in a day or two. And it's not for lack of spending. Of the 30 countries with universal coverage, Canada spends over 13% of its economy on it, which is a lot of money for free health care. Look, I'm not saying Canada still isn't a great country. It is. But those aren't paradise numbers. Let's hear what Marr also had to say about immigration. Let's take a look. Sweden opened its borders to over a million and a half immigrants since 2010, and now 20% of its citizens are foreign born, and its education system is tanking, and it has Europe's highest rate of gangland killings. And one result is that the far right parties are in the government now there for the first time, to which liberals say blaming immigrants for the rising crime rate is racist. Yeah, but is it true? Of course it's true. It's not a coincidence the quality of life went down after the Somali gangs started a drug turf war using hand grenades. So every now and then, Robbie, I think Bill Maher kind of stumbles across a kind of conservative take, and conservatives run to praise him and celebrate him as this is sort of based ex-liberal, but I'm sure next Friday on his show, he'll say something else that will anger them. But uh, let's start with Canada, right? Mm -hmm. Because he talks about the healthcare system, single payer healthcare, not as great as all the left wingers would have you believe. But the other thing he didn't get into there was Canada's crackdown on free speech. There was, of course, uh, the desire of Trudeau and his government to prevent the freedom convoy of the truckers protesting vaccine mandates to be able to engage in their protest and then he ended up seizing uh, the bank accounts of some of them and preventing their ability to uh, either get donations or in general use their own money freely as they saw fit. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a hellscape. Yes, um, it's always interesting to see uh, and hear um, some American liberals pine for Canada, our, our neighbor to the north, or talk, especially their health system being so good, then you find out, well, what is the wait time to see a doctor there? In a lot of cases, it's astronomically longer to get critical care you need. You have people in Canada come to the U.S. So I think it's not all it's cracked up to be. And you're so right to point out um, the infringements on civil liberties and free speech that this supposedly progressive government has pursued. Um, I actually think a lot of people's um, uh, uh, assumptions about Canada and even a lot of Europe, European states, how they're run, end up being wrong in both directions because I've seen like uh, on some measures, Canada has a less intrusive, gut. like they, they've they been ranked on like economic freedom indexes as more free sometimes than the U.S. Because the US, while they, they might spend more on, but proportionally on welfare and on health care and on things, but they, I think they, in some ways they tinker with the economy less, so there's less like, re, you know, wholesale regulation of industry. Um, I, I want to have that less regulation and then also maybe the American approach um, to the welfare state because it's clearly, it's clearly getting amok there. But here's where we're going to disagree, I yes, bet. Yes, I'm sure. Is it immigrants who are responsible for, um, for rising problems in some of these countries, including in Europe, um, rising crime? So as far as I know from looking at the statistics in the U.S. context, I don't, maybe it could be different in Europe, I don't know, it doesn't seem to me that immigrants are especially likely or are more likely than the native population to commit crime to the extent we have you know, rising and increasing crime in various cities, including in D.C., where we are right now, doesn't appear to be caused by a spike in immigration to my mind. It's not to say there aren't problems, but I think there's something wrong about, you know, blaming it on immigrants. Okay. Well, let's start with, All right, let's, let's go. Okay. Let's, go. let's start with Sweden, okay. which he brought up in the uh, the statistics about the rise in gang criminality and uh, the decline in the economy there. There's also been a huge rise in rape and sexual assault in Sweden that is directly attributed to the number of refugees that they've taken in since 2018 from mostly African uh, Muslim countries and, and uh, Muslims from the Middle East as well. And so it's not a race issue, it's a cultural issue. And some of those cultures believe that it's justified to treat women in degrading and violent manners. So that's 
I mean, that's number one. But number two, to your point about whether those statistics bear out in the United States, it's kind of difficult for us to even say one way or the other because most U.S. states do not track crime that's committed by illegal aliens. The only state that does is Texas. And their prison data um, has been used by various think tanks, whether it's Cato or the Center for Immigration Studies, and they disagree wildly on what the data actually says. Um, basically, Cato says if you just look at the raw numbers, then it looks like illegal aliens commit less crime than Native Americans. And I'm talking about obviously people who are citizens of the United States, not, not like the, not, not like the Native, Native not like feather yeah. Native Americans. Um, but the Center for Immigration Studies claims that they actually have higher rates of violent crime mm-hmm. because they say that Cato fails to account for the fact that people are not automatically identified as legal aliens when they're first entered in, into the criminal justice system. Sometimes their immigration status isn't known until later. Mm-hmm. And so if you account for that, you end up having much higher crime rates among the illegal alien population. Now, you're correct to say that immigrants generally, if we're talking about legal immigrants in the U.S., they do tend to have either equal or lower crime rates than the Native American population. But we should expect that because our immigration system obviously has really strict processing. It takes years for people to get legal status. And we generally have a merit-based immigration system for the most part. So we should want that uh, the legal immigrants we have coming here to have right. a better crime rate. But again, we don't really have good data on whether that's the case for illegal aliens. And so if you look at crime that's committed by illegal aliens, the question is, could we have prevented this by simply enforcing borders, for example? Well. Maybe. I mean, I think, look, I don't want um, uh, violent criminals streaming across our borders, assaulting our women, et cetera. Obviously, that's very bad. I want to prevent gang-style criminal activity from taking hold in the U.S., Um, the question is, and I think the answer is yes, can we, could we prevent that, you know, have whatever border security we need to prevent very dangerous people from coming to the country while still accepting Made by, maybe by making the legal process easier for people to come here, people who have low, will subsequently go on to have low crime rates, who want to contribute to our economy, who want to start businesses, who want to work jobs, who want to grow our economy, who want to contribute meaningfully and productively to American society. And we have, you know, the process to go through that is such a, is such a nightmare. And so we get more of the, the, the kind of reality of people you know, seek, going through, frankly, unsafe circumstances for them to come to the U.S. and then, you know, massing on the board, creating some level of kind of just chaos and disorganization, I think, in border towns that is sometimes frustrating to the people who live there. I get that. Uh, but we've made the process so confusing and so difficult. And it seems like we're, it, 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 I, I think we should be able to have both. I think we should be able to make sure we are not bringing in, we're not um, importing violence into the country while still being welcoming and affirming of people who will make our, our country better off because we need to build houses and we need, pe- we need to grow our labor force. We need to, we need to um, take advantage of the resource that human ingenuity is. Yeah, and then you get into like economic questions about immigration, which are probably a whole separate conversation that I'm sure we'll talk about on a future episode yeah. of this program. But I think just on the security aspect of it, we traditionally have not done a very good job, even through the legal immigration process, of preventing people coming from cultures that, frankly, don't respect rule of law or American tradition, which I think are important things Mm -hmm. when we're talking culturally about what we want our country to look like. We just saw last week, for example, a bunch of people in Dearborn, Michigan, legal immigrants, chanting death to America in a protest. I mean, there's no reason why people like that should be able to come here and basically mm. threaten the country who's done a favor to them by giving them a better opportunity. I mean, but I got news for you, right? Like a hostile, from a, you know, you're from a conservative standpoint that the hostile, the most hostile to like America and the founding values and all that, like that is, a, a popular view among, right, like very left-wing people on college right. campuses. Right, but who I can't stop them from being and, born here. Well, no, right, who have been here, who came over on the But Mayflower. I can stop a legal immigrant who feels the same way is, from coming. My point being, my, like my, my argument to conservatives who make this is that you can't, the, the threats to the way of life, to free markets and free speech and some values that 
we have in common, although we disagree on a lot else, is that like it's the, the threat is homegrown. It's not, right. it, you can't, it, it's not being polluted by people coming in. It's that there's fundamental disagreement, even, you know, I'm, again, I'm with people who've been here for generations and are wealthy and privileged that, ha that hold uh, dissenting or different values. And, you know, I want a system where, where people can exercise, I guess, at the least amount of control over someone else's life that as possible and you can you know decide how to run your own life and and have you know decision rights over your property and your space and someone else can do that for their property and their space i just think i think it's a little bit of a of a of misdirection to say everything would be fine if we could keep out these people who you know, chant death to America. I'm like, I think that's, still, a, that's a strong man, go to man, Berkeley and be, they'd yeah, be chanting not, it every day, even if their grandparents and great-grandparents were born here. But that's a straw man, right? Because I'm not saying that everything would be solved if we just mm -hmm. prevented those people from coming to the United States. That's part of, obviously, a larger strategy to try to raise good citizens and have people here who want to contribute productively to society and don't hate the country that they either grow up in or were or immigrated to. But that, and Sweden should be a warning of what happens when you don't exercise that right to control who comes across your borders and you in and you bring in a bunch of people, import a bunch of people who end up raping your women. But, I mean okay, that's like a worst lot case of scenario. People, a lot of the people coming from Mexico, coming over our southern border, are fleeing socialist dystopias that they despise. Then they can apply are terrified for of inflation, have seen what inflation does. Some of them are religious conservatives. They come from nations that are more Catholic than ours. They they don't like communism. Like they have a lot. Like frankly, I'm not afraid of their of their cultural values ruining our country. I I, I welcome these cultural values as a warning they could send to the rest of the country about what having what having high inflationary policies empowering socialism how it can go wrong and lead to massive political repression. Yeah, I mean, I, I think those uh, people from different countries in Central and South America are not monolithic. So if you're talking about Cubans or Venezuelans, you might be on the right track. But at the same time, Venezuela now has homegrown or uh, is importing gangs here now where we have Trendel Aragua in New York City terrorizing American citizens and then sending the money back to Venezuela. So, I mean, it's not just like, oh, they're all Catholics and they all wear crosses around their necks so they're all good people. I mean, there still has to be a modicum of screening for people. No, sort of, yeah. we, can, we can screen. It, but the way the right talks about the immigrants coming in is, is it's entirely an invasion. They're entire, entirely well, hostile it's, to the it's, American it's, project. It's millions it's not, of people a year. And and that's on top of who, two who million gotaways. We have no idea cases. who they are. All right. Well, we I no problem to do some screening. You'd let us know what you think about it. More of free media after this.